Previously on So You Want to Build a Bathroom Vanity, we managed to get the bathroom base down despite some hiccups. And not good. And questionable work practices from our crew. You. Elsewhere, Victor, the evil rabbit, is plotting to take over the world. Welcome to part two in this video series on how to build your own custom bathroom vanity. Now in part one, I showed you how to go ahead and build the base for these cabinets. And today we're going to go ahead and we're going to build the carcass. But if you haven't seen part one, I will go ahead and I will link the whole series up here just in case maybe I made some videos after this and before this and you want to see both of those or more than both of those. I guess it depends on how many videos are in the series. Anyway, on to today's project. We're gonna go ahead and I have a new set of plans for the carcass. And we're gonna follow these and we're gonna build a basic cabinet carcass and it's pretty, pretty easy. I'm gonna go through it step by step. So if you're an expert, you might wanna skip ahead. But if you're just learning how to do this for the first time, like I am, then you might wanna follow each step pretty carefully. If you're worried about some random guy on the internet trying to show you how to build a cabinet carcass, you should be. But in this case, it's okay because I've hired a crack team of consultants to both design these plans and to help with the construction. Now they may seem pretty young, but I grilled them with some pretty tough questions. Where's the sink go? Oh no, no, then, then. And they seem legit. So with that settled, let's go ahead and start building this carcass. Now, the first thing you should do is head on over to the website and download these plans and print them out so you can follow along. Now, these plans are specific to me, but it should be pretty easy to customize them to your own use. These plans for the cabinet are a little low because I'm building a cabinet carcass that's gonna support a vessel sink. But if you're not using a vessel sink, the standard to go by is that your finish counter height should be somewhere between 30 and 35 inches. But it's your house, it's your vanity, do whatever you want. Now that we all have our plans, let's go ahead and start breaking down a piece of plywood and getting all the components ready. So there'll be two top stretchers, two back nailers, a bottom, two side walls, and two inner walls. Now between the inner walls and the outer walls will be where the drawers go, but we'll deal with that separately in a different video. This one's just about putting the carcass together. If you're curious about any of the materials or the tools that I've used in this video, you can check out the video's description and I'll put links down there. You can also check out the blog post that goes along with this video on the website. Now let's get down to building. And we'll start with the bottom piece of this cabinet. We'll go ahead and we'll cut it out to the correct width and depth. And we'll go ahead and prep it for the inner panels that will form our dividers by cutting the quarter inch dados on the left and the right side. We'll cut the dados using a router and we'll do this by laying it up against a straight edge and then running it across the straight edge to cut a dado straight through. Now the bit I'm using on this router is called an undersized plywood bit and really what it is is just a few fractions of an inch smaller than the actual three quarter inches of the plywood. So we'll go ahead and we'll install that in the router. And then I'm going to use this Craig setup bar to set the height of the router bit at one quarter inch. With everything set up, we'll go ahead and route out those dados. Now to do this, we'll use the round side of the router and we'll push that up against the straight edge. The reason for this is that even if you move it a little bit, the round edge will stay to the straight edge and keep the cut consistent. And if you use the flat edge and you move it even a tiny bit, it will kind of lever off the straight edge and your cut's gonna be crooked. We can now turn our attention to cutting up the inner panels. Now they start out pretty easy because all you need to do is cut out a rectangular panel that fits your height and depth. You do need to be careful that you subtract off enough that you can put a three quarter inch stretcher between the outside panels and just above this one. When you're doing that, you need to account for 
the dado as well, and that's a quarter inch. In reality, you're gonna cut these inner panels a half inch shy of what you cut the outer panels. Once you have the panel cut, it's time to go cut the notches out for the rear nailers. And there's one on the top and there's one on the bottom. And to do this, I'm gonna use a jigsaw. And I am really awful with a jigsaw. So I'm gonna be really careful and I'm gonna use a straight edge and I'm going to line up the saw perfectly and I am still going to screw up this cut. Anyway, I'm gonna to have to fix this later, but for now I'm going to throw out the straight edge and go back to just eyeball cutting it. And while I'm not perfect, it's a lot better than the cut I made with the straight edge. Now that we got the notches cut out and the dados cut into the base piece, we'll go ahead and we'll glue the inner walls into those dados and we'll just hold it together with some bar clamps and 45 degree cabinet clamps while the glue dries. Now just in case you're interrupted by one of Victor's maniacal plans to take over the planet, now is a good time to go ahead and subscribe and like the channel. It really helps us out and once the power is back on, it will make it much easier to go ahead and refine this video. Now while the glue is drying for that, we can prep the outer panels for the left and right walls and these will just be three quarters of an inch higher than the inner walls. And this is to make it so that the stretcher can fit from the inside of the outer walls and go across those inner walls. Make sure that when you're doing this cut for these outer walls that you accommodate for the quarter inch dados that will lower those inner walls a little bit. The outer walls should be a half inch bigger than the inner wall because the inner walls will be sunk into the base by a quarter of an inch, giving you the total of three quarters of an inch. The outer panels are gonna be connected to the base using butt joints, glue, and screws. I can do this because these walls are gonna be contained within the drywall in that cove where I'm installing this vanity, but if you were doing this as a freestanding unit, you might wanna consider using um, a different type of joinery. Something like rabbits might work really well because they cover up the edge of the frame, and you also probably don't wanna use screws. You probably just wanna clamp this up using glue. Or another option would be to get a laminate that matches your face frame and cover everything up on the side and just glue it in place. You can do whatever you need to do to make sure this fits your application. That's the nice part of building the carcass this way. Once we have everything glued up, we wanna make sure we attach the angle clamps again to make sure everything is square. It's very important that this carcass stays square, not only to fit in place, but also to attach the face frame properly later. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach clamps just to hold a little extra pressure while the glue dries. Technically, the screws will give you all the clamping pressure you need while the glue is drying, and we're not removing them, so that's extra strength anyway. So the bar clamps, they're really overkill, but if you have them, why not use them? Once you give the glue a few hours to dry, you can go ahead and remove the clamps, and we can put on the front stretcher. Now, the front stretcher and the back stretcher are probably two of the most important parts in this carcass assembly, and the reason is this is your last chance to make sure everything is square. So if things started to move a little bit, this is a chance to get all those divider boards perfectly straight. So we're gonna put some glue on this and before we put those screws in, we're gonna make sure that we use these cabinet clamps and double check that everything is perfectly square. And once the glue is dry on that, we'll remove the clamps and we'll do the same on the back stretcher. The final step is to go ahead and attach the nailers to the back of the cabinet. All you need to do is slide them into those notches that you cut out. And then you're just gonna go attach them to the frame the same way you attach the stretchers by using some screws and a little bit of glue. Well, this carcass is done and laid to rest. As you can see, we have all the components squared up and we are ready to go ahead and move on to doing the face frame. Thanks for watching video two in this series on how to build a custom bathroom vanity. Hopefully you found this information useful and you'll give us a like below because it really helps out the channel. And um, subscribe so you can stay up to date with the other videos we create, including the next one in this series, which is gonna be on how to build a face frame. As always, if you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment down below or go check out our website and the blog post and leave a comment there as well. Until next time, good luck with your project and we'll see you again soon. Mommy, look who I made. <laughs>